Good evening and welcome to Balance Orlando. We're going to be working on Raw Session 8 today. Raw Session 8 is the first of three sessions for the integrative series. And we're going to be working primarily on Debo's lower extremities, on her lower legs and hips today as we will integrate her legs back into her spine. And before we begin, I'm going to ask Debo how she felt after I did a lot of deep work in both your mouth and your nose. Well, right after I slept very well. Um, so I think it relieved a lot of tension. Um, and then um, going on further, I actually am not so sure that I notice one way or the other. So it's certainly nothing negative to report. Okay, this is good to know. A lot of people that I've roughed in over seven years have cried. Some people have become very quiet. Some have been angry, uh, working in the mouth, working in the nose. And so this is good to know that you slept well yes. and uh, there wasn't any pain. So it's interesting you said that, though, because I would imagine it relieved a lot of stress for me. Um, so I would imagine if somebody had something that they were holding on to and it released the stress that it could make it easier for somebody to cry or they might get more contemplative and therefore get silent. So that's interesting that that's sometimes what you get. Indeed. Thank you. And thank you for your honesty this evening. Before we begin, we're going to do a walking analysis. So Double's going to come up from the table, and we're going to start in our usual position, and Double's going to walk to the door a couple of times. I'm going to be, before she begins, I'm going to be looking at her Achilles tendons. I'm going to be looking to see if she crosses that sagittal plane. I'm going to be seeing if her back, her sacrum is like a pendulum, and that her buttocks can move up and down, and the pendulum of the spine moves left and right. So a lot of things I'm looking at while Devil is walking, and here we go. Good, and we're going to do that one more time. And so as Debo comes back, I see that she's walking very comfortably, that she's walking in a sagittal plane. Their one leg is not crossing over that middle line, but there's a natural ease in the walk. I saw the pendulum in the sacrum moving. So now I have to put my military uh, binoculars and glasses on. And one thing I saw was that there's a slight, just slight pronation in the left foot compared to the right foot. So I'm going to start with the feed and just gently integrate your uh, devil's lower legs, feet, ankles back into the spine. So devil's going to come back on the table and we will begin. Okay, so devil is on the table. And yes, I did mention that there's a little bit more pronation in the left heel. And as I'm just gently cupping the ankles, Yes, there's more sensitivity and even inflammation on the left heel. But when I pick up Devil's right leg and left leg, I notice that there's a little bit more ease, a little bit more on the right leg. It's easier to pick up the right leg versus the left, the left leg versus the right leg. And also it's easier to turn the left leg in versus the right. So I decided I'm going to work on the left side first. This is more general work, so we're going to do a little bit more movement than we have in the past. That the left heel yes. is, um, that, you know, I had that problem with it, and it is um, almost all the way gone, but it's not all the way gone, so that's probably what you're feeling. Okay. All right, so thank you, Debo. One thing I always like to do is I like to check in with my clients to see how they're walking and 
your walk to the door and back a couple times looked really good. Now I'm going to make my banana, shape of a banana, see if you pass the test. And I'll give you a B minus. It's a little hard to make the shape, but you make the shape regardless. How does that feel to you? It feels like a great foot massage. Okay. As we know, the bottom of the foot is the beginning point of the connective tissue along the posterior lower body. So I always like to start there first. And then I'm just, just very generally working on the retinaculum, that connective tissue above and below the ankle. I call them hula hoops, basically, so that the flexors and extensors of Devil's lower leg pass through these two hula hoops of connective tissue, which then go into the into her foot, which allows her to flex her foot, extend, invert, evert, and rotate. So I'm just going to ask you, Devil, any, we know there's a little soreness and tightness on the inside of your inner heel. Mm -hmm. What about on the outside? Any soreness or tightness here? As I press, like very, very little. Like okay. Just at the top of your stroke. But... So, as we begin this Rolf session eight, I just want to give as much range of motion to Debo's feet. I want her feet to be like a panther. So, I feel a little bit more tightness on the outside of the Achilles tendon. Can you confirm or deny oh, that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the great thing about this double is that you can always roll and massage your inner and outer ankles by sitting down, like I'm doing, cross one leg over the other, and do some movement. Okay. Going back to the bottom of the foot. I actually did um, do some stuff on the um, ankle coming off of the foot and moving my foot while I was doing it the way that you had showed me, and that's part of why the heel um, is so much better. What I like is that where the plantar fascia tendon starts at the heel is feels very good. It doesn't feel that tight. So whenever I notice there's inner heel discomfort, I always, that's the first place I go is right along the bottom of the heel, just to that insertion point. Okay, I'm happy with this. And now I'm going to just see what's happening in the bottom of the calf muscle. I'm just placing my hand or my fist right below the calf muscle. And tell me if there's any soreness or tightness here. Just very, very little. Good. It's really, it's just a little tighter, the lower you go. Mm -hmm. Is that what you feel? Indeed, in fact, if there is tightness on the bottom of the foot, I know 99% of the time there's tightness in the calf muscles because that's one of the next places it travels to, from the bottom of the foot to the Achilles tendon to the calf muscle. I do feel a little bit of soreness or tightness, I should say, right here. Devil, what are your thoughts? Feels tight. Okay. So you're probably wondering at home, I'm not sure if Chase, our videographer, is going to edit this, but there is a it's a dog bite. Former open wound. It's a dog bite, and it's closing up really nice. And I'm just being very protective 
not to go too close to the source of the actual dog bite. But please check in with your client and client, please check in with your practitioner practitioner to tell them if that pressure is too much as we approach that, that open sore or dog bite. One thing I like about double structure is when she was standing, the kneecaps were pointing straight ahead and I'm experiencing the same thing while she's laying down. So Debo, as I'm working on your ankle, can you tell me how your daily homework has been using the foam roller on your hips? Um, so I've been doing it, but it's been spotty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes I literally don't have any time. It's like workout, shower, work, event, home, sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and do it all again the next day. So, um, but... And whenever I have space between, I made sure that I got time on it. One thing I like about Debo's left lower leg is I can pretty much go inside the tibialis anterior. If I feel a little bit more tightness than usual, I will know like right here, double right below your dog bite. I'm going to look and see what's happening on the balancing muscle in the calf. Good, let's check the bottom of the foot again. Now, have you been massaging your own feet or have you been using a tennis ball, a cross ball, the beastie ball? So I've been using a tennis ball that I've been rolling the bottom of my foot on. Mm -hmm. And then I also have sat with my, like you said, you know, with my foot across um, my ankle, across my uh, other leg. And I've, I used the tennis balls to get like a broad stroke. Um, going from the ankle up the calf a little bit. And um, that helped that plantar thing so much. The plantar fasciitis is good. Oh my God, it helped it so much. May I ask when you were first diagnosed with plantar fasciitis? I wasn't. Okay. I just started having symptoms and I think we nipped it in the bud. Good. My mom has had it, so I was pretty sure that my symptoms were the same. Just when Devil was talking, I was I always like to check in and just always lift the ankles. And this side feels still a little bit lighter than the right leg, which is good. There is a slight bit of swelling, not too much, but just a slight bit right on the inner yeah. heel. So. Sometimes what I like to recommend to my clients is while they're meditating in bed, right before they go to bed, they just take one or two pillows and just raise the ankles so that they are above the heart. Then that fluid will drain to the heart and from the heart, the heart knows what to do. I've been doing yes. that. Um, Excellent. It's just the end of the, you know, a long day, so I haven't done it yet today. Excellent. So I'm now going to, I'm going to show you a new move I, I learned. Okay. So especially for those people who might have tight calf muscles, I'm going to take the knee so that the knee to the hip is perpendicular to the table. And then I'm just going to pretend like I'm I'm going to be playing the flute. <laughs> now, now you're laughing. Yeah. 
tell us what you're experiencing. Um, well, it was ticklish when you started. And so now, I know it's a very sensitive area, so I want you just to wiggle your toes for the next 10 seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, you can laugh, two, one, and thank you. And I read it feels very light. Yeah. And even the heel now, it's not as, doesn't feel as tight. It feels uh, like I'm pressing in a lot harder or a lot deeper. Really? Yes. Okay. Wow. So that's, that might be a little tight as I put your foot in flexion. That feels okay. Now, what we're going to do is to take your right knee into your chest very gently with your hands. And now I'm going to see what's happening with Debo's leg. And the good thing is the leg is not going out and it doesn't really pop up too much at all. It kind of stays on the ground. So the next thing I'm going to do is to raise the table a little bit and just palpate Debo's thigh. So if you have a partner, this is really nice to do because you're doing two things. You're, the client, Debo, is contracting the psoas major while at the same time I'm helping her to elongate the psoas major on the left side. And we to hang out here just another couple seconds. Excellent. It's going to come back here. Now we're going to take your left knee into your chest, if you don't mind. Thank you. And then from here, you can relax your hands. We're going to do like a tree pose, but on our, <laughs> on our back. And I'd like to just work the inner quadricep muscle, the vastus medialis, as well as some of the adductor muscles. Now, double, tell me if this is tight, sore, or painful. So far, not at all. Okay. Now I'm going to go a little bit lower into Devil's adductor muscles. What I like about Devil is when she walks, she's very conscientious to place her toes forward and push off on her toes while at the same time looking forward. A lot of people when they walk are very conscious of others watching them and will look down. So thank you, Devil, for your confidence when you're walking just five steps to the door and back. Okay, I'm done there. We're gonna come back. Very good, very good. Now I'm going to have you to slowly come off the table. I'm just gonna lower the table for you so that it makes it easier for you to come down. And then we're gonna go for a walk. I, I believe, I, can't, I think I mentioned it in the beginning, but I was, I did get the Rolfing series um, done about 10 years ago. And prior to having that done, I did look down when I walked. And it was because of the Rolfing series that I was able to lift my head comfortably mm -hmm. and it became so natural now that I don't even think about it. So I, I just wanted to say that because I found it interesting that you mentioned it. So hey, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you.
My legs feel different. Okay, in what way? My right leg feels so heavy <laughs> and stiff. And let's do that one more time. Okay. Wow. And so the great thing about double walking is we really didn't spend that much time on her feet or lower legs. It just means that double sits down in a chair like this. Let me come over here so you can see. And she crosses her leg over. She can take some grapeseed oil, coconut oil, uh, MCT oil, water, moisturizer, whatever. And she can use her hand and really get into the bottom of her foot. And what I encourage you to do is touch your toes when you first wake up in the morning. Then come back, massage the bottom of your foot for a minute or two minutes, as well as the inner heel, and try it again. Usually I always get like a three to five inch uh, reach advantage or reach increase when I massage the bottom of my feet. So uh, thank you. We're going to have you come back on the table. Okay, Debo has taken a walk after we've worked with her foot, ankle, lower leg, and adductor of her left leg. Now we're going to look at the right leg. And I'm just going to check her flexion, extension, any soreness or pain as I no take the foot. Soreness, but I feel, I mean, I feel the tightness. I feel it falling on the rest of the <laughs> There's that beautiful <laughs> laugh of Debo. That's something to work on. Good. Let's check the inversion, which is very good. The flexion was pretty good. It's the extension yeah. where we could, it's okay. It's pretty good. It could, it could be a little bit better. And then the eversion, which actually oh, oh. is, was, feels a little sore. Yeah, that actually hurt a little bit. Okay. Does not happen very much. It's pretty our work. So again, if there's tightness on the inner heel, let's look at the bottom of the foot and look at the inner leg. If it's tight on the outside heel, which it is, we need to be concerning ourselves with the peroneal muscles and the interosseous membrane. So here we go. We're going to do the Arthur Gillespie unofficial banana test. That's not part of the training? No. <laughs> and if you can remember, how does this feel on the right bottom of the foot compared to the left? Is it about the same? Um, I, I actually, are you using the same pressure? Yes. I, it, so now I felt it, um, but this part here, it almost feels less. I would agree. But when I go up. Yeah, that feels plenty. Yes. <laughs> so I encourage all directions. And the reason why we're feeling this tightness is because this bone is jutting out a little bit. Yeah. And so I know there's going to be a lot more tightness in between the first and second toe. Let's yeah. just do an experiment. How does that feel? Double. It's tight. Yes. It's actually not as unpleasant as it was on the other side. I, I don't even feel you. And we're doing the same thing on the left side. I don't even feel you. Doesn't <laughs> even feel me. Yeah. Come back on yep, the right tight. side. So one of your homework assignments is to make the peace sign with your two, two uh, big toes. You can take one or two fingers, kind of spread them out and just gently go in between that space. Yes, there is tightness. Which takes us to the role of shoes in how our toes splay. There's a lot of discussion in structural integration and rolfing circles. I'm starting to wear shoes which allow the foot display and I'm very thankful for that. Good, a couple more times. I 
I'm just, I, maybe I asked you this before, but is having a bunion genetic or hereditary? Um, it has to do with how you walk, mm -hmm. and that part tends to be hereditary. Okay. And tell me how the bottom of the foot feels now compared to two minutes ago when I first did this. When I'm first taking your, yeah, with my fingers and I'm just going. It's still very uh, tight, but mm -hmm. it's not nearly as, well, it feels like you're using more pressure here. Uh, I mean, like, but it doesn't, I'm not coming off the table. Okay. <laughs> So, but when that usually happens, and I can go very deep into the bottom of the foot, yeah. some things happen. And one of the first things is your inner and outer heels start to soften up. Remember, there's a lot of tightness on the outer heel. Yeah. There still might be a little discomfort, but it feels a lot softer. Is that the same pressure? Uh, it's deeper, actually. Oh, wow. Okay, then it's definitely a lot softer. Because it, it hurt that first time you've been mm -hmm. in there. There's definitely definitely power in the bottom of the foot, and today yeah, this. Moving too. So we're going to start because initially Debo was mentioning that there was pain when I palpated the outer right heel. Um, yes. yes yeah. I'm going to work right on the edge of Debo's tibia, so. I'm going to have double to gently flex and extend. And I'm making sure that it's her movement is slow and not too muscular. And I'm making sure that the tibia is right down the middle of the table. Good. We're going to do one more pass. How is the pressure, Debo? It's good. I definitely feel more as the lower you get. So again, we check. We do a check with the bottom of the foot. I'm feeling less crunchies. Yeah, there's a little, but yeah, it is less. And there are very few crunches on the outside of your foot, yeah. but more on the inside of the foot. Yeah. And now we're going to check the outside of the outside heel. And you tell me how that feels. One spot right kind of near the bottom. Well, uh, not the heel, but like when you're going around the ankle. Right there. And definitely not nearly as bad as it was. So I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but I'm taking my hands right on the edge of the Achilles to about right here. And, but I'm doing it on the outside of Devil's right foot. Right there, it's pretty tight. So where there's tightness, I'm just gently placing my finger there and we're just doing some movement work. Good. Now I'm going to check in and see how those hula hoops of connective tissue are feeling. Now I definitely feel more tightness on the outside when I'm going right towards the tibia compared to the to the inside. So we're going to try, this is our, I call this a sweet spot or the truth. And I know this is a little uncomfortable, Debo. Tell us how you're feeling. When I place my finger right underneath your lateral malleolus or ankle yeah, bone. like I need to breathe. Okay. Again, I really want to give Debo the feet of a panther. I want her to get a lot of range of motion.
She has it. I'm just trying to give it, give her even more range of motion. How's the outside of the foot feeling? Again, it's better, but it's still tight. I mean, I can tell it's not nearly what it was, but you know, then you get to like one spot and that spot stays. Okay. So now we're going to do the, the fist test. I'm just going to place my fist right underneath your calf muscle and you tell me, tell us how you're feeling. Well, just by laying my leg on your um, fist, it made me laugh, which to me tells me it's kind of, it's pretty tight. So from there, I'm going to make sure. <laughs> so I like this move. It's like I'm taking the lower leg where it needs to be. It's not going out or in. Then I'm taking my, one of my fingers kind of going right inside the tibia, right inside the tibialis anterior. And then if I wanted to, I can do a third thing is I can take my elbow. I just call this pumping water at the well. And I'm just gently just taking my doubles toes like this. A penny for your thought. Thoughts, plural, devil. Um, Tell the world what you're feeling. The uh, the top, like below the shin there. The can, top, in, no, in the sorry, body. Um, the, 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 where you're working right now. Yes. Um, is tight. Mm -hmm. So wow. we, we know that there's tight. I want you to continue, but I just want to say this to the listening audience. If there's tightness on the front, check the tightness. <laughs> so this is the this is my dilemma. <laughs> the, your stuff in my, your fist in my um calf nope. is making me laugh. I'm not stuffing it. I'm just placing it no, right I there. Know, but your, your fist in my calf is making okay. me laugh, and then you're doing the work on the shin, and that is actually unpleasant. And okay. So I'm like I'm like trying to breathe and laugh at the same time. So I'll I'll I won't do one thing. I'll concentrate my efforts on the calf myself. Ooh. There's a lot going on down there. <laughs> you were right to uh, save this leg for last. <laughs> Again, listening audience, I'm looking at, I'm doing many different tests. I'm just, is one leg heavier than the other? Does one leg easily invert, go in versus the other leg, go out? Is it tighter on one inner heel versus the other? Outer heel. Let's check how easy it is to flex, to extend, to invert, to evert. So there's a, there are many different variables, many different tests that we do to make a decision what side we work with first. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the bottom of the foot. And I'll have to, I'll be honest, I'm applying about 25 to 30 percent more pressure than I was about 10 minutes ago. And I thank you for your your breath, Devo. How is how are you feeling now? Um, it definitely is not sharp and it definitely doesn't hurt like it did before. Well, and it, it's not the same kind of discomfort. The only place that really hurt was that ankle. Oh, uh, you mean by the Achilles yeah, like tendon right there? That first time when you dug into it really hard, that, well, maybe it wasn't that hard, but it felt really hard. And it's, there's still some tender spots in there. But again, it doesn't, it's not as uncomfortable as it was when you first did it. Right there's a little tight. And so now my fingers are right on the edge of devil's tibia. I kind of think of this as like deep cleaning. It's like when you have the in-laws come to your house and you don't have 
that long to clean dirt on your floor, you just kind of take the carpet, kind of put all the dirt there and then put the carpet on top of the dirt that you swept over underneath the carpet. And now the in-laws are gone and now we're doing that deep cleaning. So the most tightness I feel in Debo's tibia yep. is right there. Yep. So that's where Debo feels it too. <laughs> and because of that, now I'm feeling the bone. I'm thinking, is there anything broken, fractured? And I need to ask you, Debo, did you fracture or, or your I have, tibia? I have only broken two toes in my entire life. And which ones are those? The two on my left foot. The, the two the small ones? ones? The fifth and fourth toe. Yeah. Okay, thank they you. Were How like, did you break them? Oh um, I, I slipped and lost my balance and my foot went out. And, you know, normally you would just fall, right? But my foot went out and kicked into something instead. Mm. And it was with all that force. And, uh, and then I promptly went to work. Um, and my job was standing up and... Um, two hours of that and took my shoe off and those things were purple and blown up like uh. balloons. And uh, that was when I was pretty sure I'd broken them. <laughs> that feels much better on the outside. A lot less... What do we call these? Snap, crackle, pop. What yeah, did you call them? Crinkles. crinkles. Bubble wrap. <laughs> Good. It and... doesn't really cushion. <laughs> okay, now tell me. I'm not laughing. Okay. So I definitely feel that the calf muscle is a lot softer. Yeah. And the bottom of the foot feels much better. So now I'm going to work inside the heel. And then we're going to work the adductor of Debo's right leg. So on Debo's right inner leg, I don't feel as much inflammation. Where is it moving from and to? I'm just curious. Um, as just along where you're pressing it. So in the um, when you started near closer to my ankle, um, there was a little sharpness, but that kind of gave away, and the sharpness kind of moved, you know, along with you. But it, it, I can feel it kind of giving away, and it gives me that sensation of the of the um, stuff sort of. I don't know, loosening? Yes. I feel a tightness right yeah, here. It's like we're driving and then we go yep. we go down really fast. But again, it feel it it doesn't feel like a roadblock. It feels more like you just kind of have to smooth the gravel out, you know? Oh, I like the way you put that. Okay, so now we're going to do, I call it playing the uh, the fiddle or playing the oboe or I haven't named this technique yet. And thank you for the breath and thank you for wiggling the toes. I forgot about that. Thank you for Almost done. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, and thank you. Now we're gonna place, do a tree pose on your back and gently come down here. I'm gonna work on your adductor and inner quad muscle.
Any soreness or tightness here, Devil? Doesn't this doesn't feel like much. Mm -hmm. so. That's more the that inner quadricep muscle. Now I'm going a little bit lower into the adductor. Okay, we're going to come back up. Good. And before we walk, I just want to just do one more test of the feet. They feel a lot better. I feel a lot less crunchiness and more, there's a lot more give in your foot, especially on the inner, on your medial arch. Oh, you read my mind. Here we go. So I want you to take your left knee into your chest. And so while, when she does that, I'm looking to see if the leg wants to go out when she does that. And it this didn't. A little bit. A little bit? Okay, it feels like it does. The other one didn't feel like it moved at all. But there's a softness to your quadricep muscle. That's good. I mean, I'm not ticklish like I was on the other side. Okay, and I want you to slowly come back, and when you're ready, I'd like you to come off the table, and we're going to take another walk, this time to see if the right foot matches the left foot in terms of ease. So, and so here we go. So we're walking in a sagittal plane. The toes are pointing forward. You're gonna walk one more time to the door. The Achilles tendon is forward. It's not going out to the side. And there's a nice ease in your hips and you have a really good contralateral motion in your hips. So I just palpated you. I'm not sure if we caught this or not on camera, but while Debo was about to walk. I was just palpating her upper gluteal muscles and found there's a little bit more tightness. Not by much, but a little bit more on the right, uh, right above the piriformis compared to the left side. So we're going to work the right side last. So we're going to get the table prepared for you to be on your side. Okay. So Debo is on her right side. We're gonna work like we always do to conclude our rolfing sessions with some hip work. And so I'm going to palpate Devil's last rib just to see how much space there is between the last rib and the hip. And I kind of like this. There's this more and more space every single week. And next thing I'm gonna do is just see how much play there is in the hip. And what we saw when he was walking over the last couple of sessions is that the hip is really moving very well. So that tells me the gluteus medius is very hydrated. And just when I'm just push, taking her hip in an anterior tilt and posterior tilt, I'm really sinking my fingers very easily in your your skin in your connective tissue. 
The only place where I feel there's tightness in doubles gluteal muscles is right here. And so that's more gluteus medius. As we know, I call that the salsa, samba, zumba muscle. It means it's the muscle to abduct. So that's all we're going to do. I call this the clamshell. And it's okay to, to laugh it out. She's just going to do that a couple more times. How are we doing, double? She's doing okay. Good. Two more times. One. Good. And two. And relax. And already just palpating the last rib and the hip. We've like moved it about an inch and a half. So the hip is an inch and a half further away from it was just two minutes ago. I want you to do a couple more clamshells if you don't mind. I really like Devil's pacing. It's slow enough and also she's not going too high. So she's not recruiting other muscles. So thank you, Devil. And this is, feels very good. We know that it's the right side. We really want to focus our attention. One more time, Devil. Good. Come on back. Very God, good movement. Me. How much are we going to laugh on the right side? <laughs> the only place now I feel tension and tightness is right <laughs> here. Before it was a little bit higher. Now it's about an inch lower. We're going to do a couple more Oof. clam so. shells. Thank you. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. I feel that. Where it engages. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to change it up. I want you to take your knee into your chest. Good. And come on back. A couple more times. Mm -hmm. Two more times. Can you tell? It feels like a workout. Yeah. I mean, it feels like there's weight involved. Last, last time. Because of whatever you're manipulating. Mm -hmm. And relax. Much better movement. Still a little tightness <laughs> right <laughs> here, but I'm satisfied. The hip is moving very well for just a couple of minutes of work. May I raise your shorts? Yes. Now working on doubles iliotibial band. So another homework besides massaging the bottom of your feet twice daily is using the foam roller to roll on the IT band because I don't I've never experienced anybody who's had a very hydrated <laughs> IT band but tight hips. So we're doing okay here. Now we're going to I like to work on the hamstring if you don't mind. I'm going to add a little water to my hand. So what I'd like you to do is to gently come here and extend, if you don't mind. Good. And come on back and extend. So when she's going one way, I'm going the other way. Good. Come on back and extend. Mm -hmm. Good. Come on back. Good, and last time.
good and relax. So the only place that's tight on her double's left side of her entire lower body is right in here. Okay, that is the gluteus medius. We're gonna flip on over to the other side. So take your time coming up. So now we're on Debo's left side and working on the right IT band, hamstrings and gluteal muscles. So last time there's a lot of laughter involved and I'm surprised. I'm surprised. There's it's not that much like laughter. A, it's almost, oh, there we go. <laughs> so I'm just taking broad strokes and people, there's really good movement in in the hip. It's just either that I don't, you're just ticklish yes, in the hips. Yes, I am ticklish okay. in the hips. So I'm going to palpate your last rib and the hip. That's a lot of space. I've been doing the foam roller mostly on this side because it's the problem child. Okay. So I just feel a little tightness right next to the piriformis. Good. And we know we know there's a lot of tightness where my <laughs> thumbs are. It's like the upper gluteus maximus. So we're going to do some clamshell work. Here we go. And come on back down. And up. Mm -hmm. Now, can you can you tell us if if it's more pain or more ticklishness at this point, or well, a combination? Right here, this area just feels a little sort of tender. And this was the point in the upper gluteal muscles on the right side, which we determined was more tight. Right. Good. So now you're going to come back and extend the leg, if you don't mind. So keeping the knees together, good. And extend that leg, good. And coming back, and again. Good, There's and coming back. Yes, ma'am. a little more discomfort now. Okay, I'll take some pressure off, and we'll just continue moving. Good, a couple more times. One. And two. Thank you. Come on back. Let's now take a look and see what's happening with the right hip. A lot more range of motion. Very good. It's kind of hard to see. Oh, wait a minute. Just like on the left side, this tightness. Closer to the gluteus medius versus the upper part of the gluteus maximus. So we're going to take the knee into the chest while laughing. Good. And come on back. And again. Mm -hmm. So some people can take a foam roller. Other people I know take basketballs, the beastie ball. Something circular to go right inside this spherical part of our body. Good. How are we doing, Debo? I'm not laughing. Okay, good. And again. Oh, man. Oh. Mm hmm. That's what I'll really, went in the ticklish spots. <laughs> That's when I start to feel the tenderness of the soreness. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm just, just trying to think. If we have one more minute, I'm trying to think what part I want to go to. All right, we're live. Okay, so double, we're going to do a couple more uh, repetitions, taking our knee into our chest. Here we go. Good. So that just means we just need to do a little bit more homework on this right hip, on the gluteus maximus and medius. You're doing very well. 
just three more times now. Good, excellent. Two more times. Mm -hmm. And last time. And give me, if you don't mind, two more clamshells. There you go. Please, when you go back home, put some Arnica on your hips, okay? I'm just going to do one last test. Great movement in your hips. And now we are going to do just one stroke on the IT band. And then we're going to do, we're going to conclude with our sacral cradle. Yes, thank you for reminding me. So I feel this more on this side than I did on the left side. It's not. You're feeling more t uh, I just tension? Feel more. I just you feel, feel it more it. on the right side compared yeah, to the left side. Okay. So it doesn't hurt, or it's just I can feel like there's more going on. Good. Let's work on your hamstrings now. So we're going to start here. And I want you to extend your knee, please. Good. And come on back and extend. So I'm right in the groove between the IT band and the hamstrings. Good. Come on back. And now we're working with the other groove between the hamstrings and the adductors. Just two more times. Good. Coming back. And last time. Excellent. Let's have you back in a neutral position, testing the hips one more time. Really good range of motion. Feeling the last rib, the 12th rib to the iliac crest. I'm happy. We're going to now have you lay on your back. So we're going to conclude with the sacral cradle, my hand is underneath Debo's sacrum, close to the coccyx. And I want Debo to start her breath right where my top hand is, right below her belly button, her umbilicus. And let's just take three nice deep inhales. All inhales through your nose. I can't breathe through my nose right now. Okay, so through your mouth. Okay. <clears throat> And exhale through the mouth. And two more times. Okay, so gently do not raise your hips and let us slowly extend our legs. And I will say that the inner heels feel a lot softer than they did when we first started. The legs feel much lighter. The feet have less crunchies. They feel a little bit more pliable. And I say to you tonight, Devil, thank you so much for coming in. 
And thank you for Roth session eight. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks for Roth session nine when we work on the upper body. Thank you.